Ever pondered upon the life of a Roman gladiator? Immerse yourself in a world where your survival hangs by a thread, dependent on the strength of your arm, the sharpness of your instincts, and the courage and the courage rooted within your spirit. Situated in the lively, bustling heart of ancient Rome, around 80 BCE to 476 AD, the gladiators were more than mere powerful warriors. They were performers, their fierce battles serving as electrifying demonstrations of valour, savagery and a stark reminder of human frailty. Diving into the rich history of ancient Rome in an era of emperor's era of emperors and monumental architecture, the gladiators emerged as a distinctive yet paradoxical societal class. Each gladiator belonged to a specific class. Each class had its unique fighting style, equipment and societal standing. Take, for instance, the Momillo, recognized for his hefty armory. This warrior was equipped with, and a gladius, a Roman short sword, his imposing figure ruling the sandy arena floor. Alternatively, consider the Retiarius, a class of gladiator that was lightly armed, wielding a trident and a net. This gladiator relied more on agility, intellect and strategy over brute force. Then there was the Threx, armed with a small shield and a curved sword. They were masters of close combat, their rapid, precise strikes a mesmerising sight. The lives of gladiators were infused with an intriguing yet melancholic existing at the crossroads of honour and servitude, admiration and contempt they lived dual lives. They were hailed as the heroes of the Colosseum, their names chanted in crowded amphitheatres and simultaneously treated as slaves to their lives, traded for the thrill of combat. In the backdrop of the grandeur of the Roman Empire, under the rule of ruthless emperors, the lives of gladiators were a constant battle. The rigorous training they underwent was reflective of this battle. A, a relentless path that shaped these men into deadly combatants. Their bodies were chiselled to perfection, every muscle a testament to their discipline and strength. Day after day, they tackled gruelling sessions, each meticulously designed their physical prowess and fine-tuned their reflexes. Yet beneath the thunderous applause of the spectators and the rush of adrenaline coursing through their veins lurked a harsh truth. For many gladiators, the amphitheatre was a one-way passage, a lethal dance where survival was nothing more than a fleeting miracle from a certainty. So who were these brave souls willing to dance with death? Who were these men whose names have echoed through the annals of history, They're their exploits woven into the tapestry of legends? Let's journey further into the paradoxical world of the Roman gladiators, uncovering the hidden complexities of their lives, their brutal training routines and their dual identity as both celebrated entertainers and enslaved. We will reveal the stark contrasts encapsulating their lives, the strenuous training, the ephemeral glory and the ever-present threat of death, shedding light on the human aspect behind these legendary warriors. Our saga commences with the most legendary figure in history, Spartacus. Born into a simple Thracian family in the little-known region of Thrace, his early years were marked by primitive farming, the norms of his community. His life was irrevocably altered, however, when the mighty Roman Empire tore him from his homeland and dumped him into the harsh world of slavery. This transition was brutal and abrupt, ripping him away from familiarities, familiarities, and plunging him into a life of servitude and toil. The initial years of his life in Rome were characterized by unending hardships as he was subjected to backbreaking labor in the stone quarries and an incessant fight for survival. Being a Thracian, he was considered barbaric and was often treated with disdain and cruelty. Still, despite these harsh circumstances, his spirit remained unbroken. He possessed, he possessed a spirit of indomitable resilience and an impressive physical strength that was so distinct among the slaves that it led him to be selected for rigorous training as a gladiator. This training was far from gruelling sessions that tested the limits of his endurance and willpower. He was taught to fight, to kill without remorse and to entertain the bloodthirsty Roman audiences. This combination of raw power and unwavering spirit turned him into an opposing force in the amphitheatre. However, Spartacus was more than a gladiator showcasing his might in the arena. His journey from a simple Thracian farmer to a slave to a gladiator had shaped him into a beacon of rebellion and hope, 
an embodiment of the suppressed desires for liberation and freedom in those bound by the shackles of slavery. He stood for the countless voices silenced under the oppressive regime of slavery. In 73 BC, Spartacus stepped of the shadows of the Colosseum to take the reins of a revolution. He spearheaded a slave uprising known as the Third Servile War against the Roman Republic. It was not a minor revolt, but a grand-scale rebellion involving tens of thousands of slaves from all corners of the empire. Spartacus, the Thracian farmer turned slave, turned gladiator, turned revolutionary, was the mastermind behind a series of strategic victories that left the Roman society shaken and stirred. Even though they were heavily outnumbered and lacked resources compared to the Romans, Spartacus led his band of rebels, rebels, with such skill and fervor that it made them a formidable force against the Roman legions. He leveraged innovative guerrilla tactics, exploiting the Romans' arrogance and making the best, best use of the local terrain. The rebellion under Spartacus's leadership, though eventually suppressed, had far-reaching impacts. It exposed the inherent weaknesses and flaws in the Roman slave system, and it sparked a flame of resistance among the exploited and oppressed. The name Spartacus came to resonate with a beacon of freedom and rebellion, an enduring testament to the unyielding human spirit for liberty. Spartacus, a name that is now eternally etched in the chronicles of Roman history, not just as a gladiator, but as a symbol of unwavering resilience and an insatiable quest for freedom. His legacy lived on, inspiring future slave uprisings and continuously challenging the concept of freedom. His struggle from a humble farmer to a gladiatorial hero stands as an enduring testament to the capacity of the human spirit to resist and fight for liberation, regardless of the circumstances. Venturing now into the riveting tale of Commodus, an emperor with a baffling fascination for the gladiatorial combats that was unheard of in the realms of the imperial echelons. This was not just a mild interest, an occasional hobby, but an all-consuming obsession. Unlike his regal predecessors, Commodus was spellbound, completely enthralled by the electrifying atmosphere of the gladiatorial arena. More than just a stoic observer from his imperial podium, Commodus was an impassioned participant, throwing himself into the brutal battles that raged in the pit. His penchant for this blood sport was an insatiable addiction. It wasn't simply a pastime, it became a defining characteristic of his reign, of his reign, morphing the grandeur of the imperial palace into a mere spectator's pit. In a twist absolutely unheard of, Commodus would routinely relinquish his majestic imperial robes for the unsophisticated attire of a gladiator. He voluntarily renounced his throne and emperor's status to immerse himself in the blood-soaked world of gladiator fights. Opting to fight as a secutor, a heavily armed gladiator, he seized this platform as a stage to flaunt his might and prowess to the citizens of Rome. His performances, though horrifying, were strangely mesmerizing and deviated greatly from the norm, causing waves of unease among the Romans watching their emperor revel in such brutal displays of combat with an alarming mix of awe and terror. Commodus's extreme obsession with combat had monumental repercussions on his reign. It ignited a period of turbulence and turmoil in the Roman Empire. Engulfed in his arena performances, Commodus grossly disregarded his imperial duties and the governance of his empire. His rule was marked by scandal and controversy that led to an escalating surge of dissatisfaction and unrest among the Roman public. The fixation that once distinguished him was his eventual downfall. His reign ended not in the grandeur of the imperial chambers, but in the very arena he idolized so fervently. This strange obsession with the arena estranged him from the Roman public and his political adversaries, who plotted his downfall to his ultimate defeat. And so, the reign of Commodus, the emperor who traded his palace for the sands of the arena, came to a tragic and shocking end. Our third gladiator, Flammer, was not merely a warrior, but a fervent devotee to the gladiatorial creed. Born in the ancient lands of Syria, his rise to fame was rapid, achieving the coveted title of a secutor. This unique group of gladiators was easily identified by their distinctive battle gear. Flammer, armed with a short sword and a large rectangular shield, 
became a symbol of awe and admiration. His unyielding spirit and fiery resolve inspired his name, Flammer, translating to flame, his flame. His path to victory was not just a journey, but a testament to his commitment to the gladiator's calling, captivating the spectators of Rome's grand amphitheaters. Peeling back the layers of Flammer's illustrious career, we find a warrior who remained steadfast in over 34 monumental battles, claiming victory in 21. His movements were swift, his strategies were impeccable, and he's dominated his adversaries. Notably, his repeated triumphs against the Ritiarii, the elusive net-wielding gladiators, defined his unrivaled skill in the arena. Flammer's extraordinary proficiency led him to be offered the Rudis, a wooden sword symbolizing freedom, an unparalleled four times. But surprisingly, Flammer declined this honor on each occasion. His denial wasn't born of rebellion or a savage thirst for violence, but rather steeped in an unwavering dedication to his chosen path as a gladiator. In the perilous sands of the Colosseum, Flammer chose to remain, immersing himself in the raw, visceral experience of being a gladiator. The thunderous applause of the crowd, crowd, the intoxicating rush of battle, the deep-seated respect of his comrades. These were his true triumphs, his real freedom. He was not merely surviving in this world, but actively choosing it, cherishing it. Flammer, the gladiator who prized the electrifying thrill of battle over the peaceful lure of freedom. The man who stepped into the gladiatorial ring was not a mere brute. He was Tetrates, a master of the bloody ballet that was combat. His fighting style was an art form in itself, a fusion of raw power, targeted, deadly strikes, and a strategic patience that created a palpable tension in the arena. As a secutor, a type of gladiator known for their, for their heavy armor, Tetrates was a formidable presence. He moved with an air of calculated intimidation, his every step and gesture designed to outwit and outlast his adversaries. The ring was his stage, and he was a performer, infusing each a dramatic edge that left spectators on the edge of their seats. His was a unique combat style, a blend of physical prowess and intellectual tactics that transformed each battle into an epic narrative of survival. His popularity popularity among the Roman crowd was nothing short of phenomenal. The name Tetrates stirred a sense of awe and almost fanatical excitement among the masses. To them, he was not just a gladiator, but a symbol of strength, bravery, and the indomitable will to survive. Every move he made, each strike he landed, and every deft parry he executed were seen as testaments to his extraordinary skill and courage. The spectators did not merely watch his battles, they experienced them, Living each suspense-filled moment with baited performances in the Colosseum were grand spectacles that held the audience in thrall. Each fight was a display of athleticism and drama, a perfect fusion of raw power and agility, executed with a flair for theatrics that sent the spectators into a frenzy of exhilaration and admiration. His battles were merely contests of strength, but narratives filled with unexpected twists and suspenseful turns that kept the audience's hearts pounding with anticipation. Tetrates was a gladiator, yes, but to the Romans he was a hero, a beacon of bravery and resilience in the bloody sands of the Colosseum. And his name even today echoes within the ancient stone structure, a testament to his enduring appeal that transcends the centuries. Spirit lives on in the Roman ruins. His tale continues to inspire, a timeless story of power, bravery, and the will to survive against all. We continue our historical journey with the exceptional warriors of the Colosseum. Our first stop brings us to the close bonds of Priscus and Verus. These two combatants were not just gladiators, but inseparable partners who defied the fatalistic undertone of the arena with their extraordinary friendship. The renowned poet Marshall immortalized their epic battle during the inaugural games of the Colosseum in his verses, emphasizing their dramatic showdown, which was a showcase of stunning mastery and strategic expertise. Exceptionally, both gladiators were awarded the Rudis, a wooden sword indicating a gladiator's release from service. This rare conclusion to a gladiatorial battle was celebrated as a harmonious blend of skill and endurance. Their story gave spectators a glimpse into the unlikely brotherhood that can form even within the harsh world of gladiatorial combat. We then delve into the life of Carpophorus, 
a bestiarius of great renown. Carpophorus wasn't celebrated for conquering human adversaries, but rather for his deadly engagements with savage beasts. His extraordinary accomplishment of slaying 20 bears, 10 lions, a single rhinoceros, and a tiger in one day brought him far-reaching fame. This remarkable feat showcased his raw courage and superior skill, earning him the admiration of Roman citizens and setting a monumental standard of valor against the raw force of nature. Our narrative then shifts to the captivating tale of Marcus Attilius, a freeborn Roman who willingly embraced the life of a gladiator. This was a notable departure from the norm in a period when gladiators were most commonly slaves or criminals. His crowning glory, his victory over Hilarus, a previously undefeated gladiator owned by Emperor Nero. This unexpected win catapulted Attilius into the limelight, challenging the traditional narrative about who could or would embrace the perilous life of a gladiator. His courageous decision to enter the arena left an enduring legacy in the rich history of the Roman Empire, reshaping perceptions. Lastly, we spotlight Crixus, the Gaul, a formidable gladiator who played an influential role in Roman history. He was a military leader in the Third Servile War, slave uprising against the Roman Republic. His life story, alongside those of Priscus, Verus and Carpophorus, serves as a powerful testament to the vibrant gladiatorial culture that was at the heart of Rome. Each of these remarkable individuals left an indelible mark on the Roman Empire, with their unique narratives becoming integral threads in the intricate tapestry of Roman history. What lasting legacy have the gladiators of days gone by left? The gladiators of ancient Rome were more than mere participants' participants in a brutal sport. They were living symbols of endurance, embodiments of bravery, and the ultimate representation of the invincible human spirit. These ten warriors, from the fearless Spartacus who triggered a slave revolution, to the renowned Commodus who used his influence to showcase gladiatorial valor, from the steadfast Flammer famed for his rejection of freedom, to the cunning to traits noted for his tactical skill, each crafted their distinct narrative in the relentless sands of the Colosseum. Their diverse chronicles profoundly resonate with us, not only as thrilling, heart-stopping displays of battle, but also as absorbing tales of individuals who defied societal expectations, braved the challenge of destiny, and imprinted their legacy in the annals of history. These gladiators serve as concrete examples of resilience, exhibiting how the human spirit can conquer even the most formidable challenges. Their experiences impart us vital lessons on the significance of strategic thinking, emphasizing how intellectual flexibility can shift the balance in any circumstance. They underline the value of honor, illustrating that dignity and respect are equally important in defeat as in victory. However, their stories did not stay restricted within the confines of historical documents. They surpassed the constraints of their time, emerging as enduring symbols of human tenacity and determination. These gladiators played an essential role in Roman society, not only mirroring its values of honor, courage and resilience against despotism and oppression, and its victories in establishing one of the greatest civilizations, but they also substantially contributed to molding these elements. Their influence permeated the societal structure of Rome, affecting legislation, molding public sentiment, and even modifying the trajectory of history. They were the superstars of their era, their heroic deeds being the gossip of the empire, their stories indelibly stamped in the public memory. Today, their influence remains prevalent, reminding us that even in the face of hardship, there is an opportunity to rise, to resist, and to triumph. Each retelling of their stories, each portrayal of their challenges, fuels our imagination, stimulates our feelings, shifts our viewpoints, and impels us to scrutinize our own potential. In the sands of the arena, they discovered glory, and through their accounts, we excavate a fragment of history that continues to captivate, invigorate, and fascinate and fascinate us even in contemporary times. 
The gladiator's spirit of resilience, fortitude, and steadfast courage holds an eternal allure, connecting us to our ancient past and steering us towards a future where we persist, battle, and triumph in our own confrontations, rendering their lessons as pertinent today as they were. That's it for our journey through the sands of the Roman arena. We hope you enjoyed this look into the lives of the most famous gladiators in Roman history. Each one of these warriors, from Spartacus to Commodus, from Flammer to Tetrates, left behind an indelible mark in the annals of history, their stories echoing through the centuries and inspiring countless generations. The gladiatorial contests were not merely bloody spectacles, they were a testament to the human spirit, an embodiment of resilience and courage, a symbol of honour and sacrifice. Each gladiator's tale is a lesson in bravery, in strategic thinking, in dignity, and in the indomitable will to survive. Their lives, their struggles, their victories and defeats form a rich tapestry of history that continues to captivate us. And now, as we bid farewell to the gladiators, we invite you to continue this journey of exploration. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the lives of these extraordinary warriors, don't forget to like this video and leave a comment below. Share with us your thoughts, your reflections, your favourite gladiator. Your engagement helps us create content that fuels your curiosity, stimulates your imagination and feeds your passion for history. And of course, do subscribe to our channel for more captivating historical content. Venture with us into the past, unravel the mysteries of history, and discover the fascinating stories that have shaped our world. Until next time, keep exploring history. From the sands of the Roman arena to the farthest reaches of the globe, history is a vast, unending saga, and we look forward to continuing this journey together. Farewell and remember, just as the gladiators did, continue to face your battles with courage, resilience, and honor.